you might say, why do we have to draw or sketch something when we can take a photograph? Let me tell you something about this. Until you can draw, you will never really understand what it is in front of you. And you won't understand the detail and you'll never really get a firm visual imprint locked into your brain about what it is that you're trying to do. Sketching is fundamentally understanding the skeleton of art. So that is why we do it. And that's why I'm gonna shift this bucket around in different locations so I'm getting an intimate knowledge of the shape of the bucket. And that applies to any subject. Is it hard? It's easy. It is really, really, really easy because all you do is look, see, process it in your brain and let it come out through your fingertips. It's not hard. Start with a simple shape such as a bucket or a square or an orange. Something very, very simple and proceed from there. It's easy and you can do it. Now, in this case, I'm sketching to do watercolour. And I'm doing exactly the same as I do if I was doing an oil painting. I simply outline the shape of the bucket. And then I go ahead and squirt out the two colours which I believe will give me the colour of the bucket in front of me. So I'm just going to put two watercolour tubes together. One is cerulean blue and the other one is ultramarine blue. And I'm using a nice wide brush and a good mix of water. Now remember we've got no light here, so the object is relatively flat. The colour is simply the same across the whole contained area of the sketch. And I'm simply going to block in between the lines. I'm colouring in. This is the same thing we did when we were at school, folks. There's nothing tricky about this. We can all do it. This is so, so easy. And I just dried the brush there, took a bit of the moisture out, and guess what? Well, it just soaks up the paint, doesn't it, and leaves me clear paper again. And what does that represent? Well, that represents the lip of the bucket. That's the only real area of, of highlight we have here. There's a little bit coming in around the snout of the bucket, but that's about it. And how simple is it? What an easy starting point for painting. The number one here is colour, and the colour is blue and I've added something else to it. And those two together have given me the look of the bucket. And it's simply a rectangular shape with a bit of a triangle stuck at one end of it. And there it is, it's a bucket. Now, let's do the same sort of thing again. This time we're gonna use oil paint. And you'll notice I've got the easel set up, which is simply an old six foot step ladder. And I'm painting in a mate's backyard in San Diego here. As you can see, salubrious settings for, well, who cares where we really paint? As long as we have the circumstances around us to make it effective. And I have, I'm relaxed, I'm standing in a, a nice grassy spot. I'm holding the step ladder, it's got four legs, it's stable and I'm able to just stand there and happily sketch in the bucket that's in front of me again. And you know what, folks? It's real easy. And you know why? Because I've done it three times before. Well, four, including the watercolour one. You notice how loose I sort of, I just sketch, I find those shapes. I don't try and draw every little thing at one time. I just try and get the little marks there that indicate what that shape is. A bit of uh, cobalt blue, some white, some thinner or some turpentine there and a nice one inch pastry brush and I make a, a nice sort of loose mix here so that it's a little bit sloppy. Remember oil paint takes a fair while to go off it's not like uh, watercolour. Watercolour this this will be dry in about three or four minutes. Well this is going to take about two or three days to really dry here but if I put a lot of thinner in that which I've done here then that will start to harden up in a matter of about 20 minutes and I can actually go over that again. And that's the secret in painting. In using oils, it's all about timing. And when you start to learn to paint in oils, do what I'm doing here. Start off with just one colour and white and a simple shape and get to know how that paint changes when you add thinner to it. How much to add or not to add in order to let the paint find its way within the lines that we've created on our canvas here which of course represents the bucket. Now, I'll darken a little bit here by taking more of the blue and less of the white. 
I'm going to find that bottom area because there's sufficient diffused light above me to still create just that drift of colour, just those little gradations of value or tone that create the shape of the bucket. If this was a flat box, although the shape is relatively squarish, but of course it's round in essence, it's a cylinder. And that is why I've got to find these other values, these other tones, because as the, as the eye finds the curve, as it retreats around the sides, then the, the tone will change. So we've got to look again, see, use the eyes to find those shapes, to find those graduations in tone. And we just go back over to our mixing spot and we fiddle around over there by adding a little bit more dark or a little bit more light. We're not going into any special brush. We're using just a regular pastry brush which we can grab out of the kitchen. And I'm only staying here for a short while, so uh, I didn't come to the backyard here fully equipped to do any great paintings. And you don't need to have great equipment to do good paintings. You just need a simple setup like I've got here, and it'll work for you. And that's why it's a great thing to do, because you don't need a whole lot of equipment to move around and just have a bit of fun painting away. Now, I'm just furring that area closest to us so that we have the effect of roundness there. And we can see that there's a drift of dark under the lip and there's another drift of dark underneath the, the recess about two inches down. Flip the brush over, use the back end of it and find our way down the side where that steel handle is inserted. A little bit of white and there's our bucket grab. A little bit more where the light just shimmers down that steel member. And that's enough to show us a bucket. You know, I could go to a small brush here and sort of get more detail in it, but I don't really need to. I'm standing back and I'm looking at about four or five feet now, and it looks good enough to me. So what have I actually done here? I've established some colours. I've used cobalt blue, and that I'm going to call that number one colour. Remember this is really identifying an area and then finding the colour that suits that area. So number one, number two is the darker colours where there is simply less light being received. And there are three areas there inside the bucket, the base of the bucket to the left hand side near the snout. Now the highlight is the other one. It's not really a big highlight, it's just a, sub, a subtle shift in value. Okay, that bucket was in shade. There really wasn't too many colours in there. I saw three little colours and I isolated the three. When, that's in, when that bucket's in sunlight, we're going to see distinct colour separation, distinct zones, distinct areas. In other words, numbered areas. And that's what we're going to look for. Come back when the sun's here and let's see what we can do then. <laughs>